thanks very much. Uh, now, the next uh, speaker is, an, is another friend of mine, uh, chair of the London Central Green Party, um, very well known, internationally known conservator. He's uh, the head of conservatory at, um, at the Wallace Collection, but his passion is uh, energy and particularly nuclear power. And I'm not, I don't even know what he's exactly going to talk about, but if you get talking to him, try and get an invitation to his house, because he has a wonderful house, which is one of the one year, 170 years, is it? 100 years. Uh, 178 in, uh, in England. Uh, um, there is carbon neutral and all that. And he has some wonderful things. That's very reasonable. He's put it in at very reasonable prices. But I'm not sure what he's going to talk about. Uh, okay, you're up. Well, yeah. um, I don't need a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to stand up here. It's all a bit improvised, obviously. Um, first thing I want to start with something which is really not controversial at all, which is basically energy saving. We all know energy saving is absolutely important. But what I want to show you is a few things how you can save energy, and we use it in the heritage sector. Like uh, Noel said, I have worked in the heritage sector now for many years, and so from the heritage sector I came interested in sustainability, because obviously we creating the perfect environment for our art object by destroying our own habitat. Anyone has been to a museum, you have vast costs on air conditioning, etc. The one thing we do, we put these filters on our windows, and they're not just keeping our daylight, and they only filter literally sort of 30 or less percent. We can obviously increase that, depending where we have our objects. But basically, they reflect all infrared light and all infrared heat. So they actually save you a lot of energy. And these films have now come so cheaply on the market, so they're just a few samples. And they're what's called color neutral, so they won't impact on your sort of visibility in a way. And when you look from the inside to the outside, you will hardly notice these films. And they actually are now very cheap, and they basically turn your single place window into more or less a double place window. So normal single place window goes about the U value of five. With that, you increase it to about three. And if you have a good double place window, it's probably about the U value of one. Yeah. So it's, it's in the right direction. It's not a tremendous amount, but it will help you to save energy. Another thing. Uh, I want to show you here, it's a little toy, which is a, a laser temperature gauge. Uh, wherever I put this dot, I can measure the temperature, yeah? So obviously I don't pay it into anyone's eyes. Uh, it's a fantastic toy, costs 15 pounds. They're very precise, and measure temperature range from minus 30 to plus 500 and something else. And basically you can actually see where you lose heat in your house. So you can literally go around, so it's not like a thermal imaging camera, but you go around and you actually see where you lose heat and you actually try to conserve energy as much as you can without obviously sacrificing your living standards. So you still want to have your Bentley and all of that, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's been trying to get it more sustainable, so to say, slowly. Um, why has energy saving never, never really taken off? Unfortunately, it's been around for decades uh, because no one makes any money at that. That's simply the reason why. So uh, you have to save energy, however way you do it, but um, you can do with insulation materials. They've all got embodied energy, but that is really recuperated in the shortest amount of time because the energy you save by literally using insulation material, even if there is energy embodied in that material, or it's even not as sustainable as it could be. But that's beside. Now, a slightly more controversial issue is uh, nuclear power and renewable energy and all that that com comes with it. And uh, yeah, uh, I saw um, there was a motion on the Green Party regarding that uh, subject, uh, subject, and I was actually quite shocked uh, about it, and I'm uh, quite disappointed that actually such a motion was first raised. But I don't want to explain why I believe that why my disappointment is so great. It's simply because I think it's all about information. Uh, a lot of people don't get the information they should have, particularly in the Green Party and the international level. Uh, good news from renewable energy hardly makes it to the headline, and other news come frequently. So bad news how uh, wind turbines interfere with our daily life, how they're ugly and how they kill all the birds and wildlife and how they never produce and how they don't turn if the wind doesn't blow. And all of these stories you hear in the press 
over and over again. It's literally recycled. If anything good comes out, you have straight away a forum on the internet which basically rubbish that with evidence, scientific evidence, <coughs> and we all sort of a bunch of nice tree huggers, but we don't know anything about science, yeah? And I want to prove to you, and unfortunately I have not my PowerPoint presentation, there's no point because the pictures are so small, you wouldn't be even be able to read the data I want to demonstrate to you, but here we go. Uh, I have got some print out here, and maybe if there's a photocopy of which functions, um, <laughs> we could print those out if anyone is interested, I can give out a few leaflets later. So, um, so it's all a bit sort of off heart now because I had my PowerPoint to, to guide me around. Um, one of the things is literally information and what is uh, predictions and what is scientific evidence. Now, that is a really difficult one because people claim, you know, they can predict economical crawl, they can claim all sorts of things and they can't get it right, they can't even get the weather forecast right. Now, how would climate change, how could they get climate change right in all of these aspects? And simply, uh, climate change does happen, obviously, I don't think anyone will deny that. To what degree, just no one knows, it's just speculation. What is a fact, that we have 400 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere at the moment, worldwide. And that is already old data, so to say, and no one disputes that. So when you're talking about evidence, you have to go to your enemy, so to say, and see if your enemy disputes what you're actually saying. And there are certain data around which no one disputes, not the nuclear lobby, not the fossil fuel lobby, no one disputes that, this, this, uh, um, actually denies that evidence. And that is an important aspect. So when we're looking at real evidence, not at predictions, because I got it constantly wrong, but what is at the moment going on? In 400 parts per million of uh, CO2, it's a very bad move indeed. And it's the highest concentration of CO2 for at least 800,000 years. So that is a fact. And that is undeniable. How that translates into climate change, God and Jesus knows, no one will know it. And then they have all these various predictions and they get it possibly wrong. Yeah, Probably not fast enough, not good enough. Other things is basically prediction about renewable energy. So everyone agrees renewable energy may contribute to some degree to uh, against climate change, fighting climate change. Renewable energy may provide us with some energy, but we need something immediately. So we need to have shale gas, nuclear power, or fossil fuel, because we can't turn in immediately to renewable energy. And that's completely wrong. And it's been proven again and again. And we're looking at countries, and when we compare countries, there is no space for bettermanship. It's not like when I talk about Germany, I am from Germany, I have an accent, you know, my name. Um, it's not about Germany, it's, it's not some oasis, some wonderful country where everything works just fantastically well and everybody is green and <laughs> hopping around on a bicycle or whatever have you. It's not like that whatsoever. Yeah, it, there's a lot of problems, yeah. But what you have to look at is, is certain evidence, and you have to put that puzzle together. So when, you, when you're looking at Britain, Britain has got the highest installation rate of PV solar in the last three years. 500,000 people in Great Britain have PV solar on their roofs. 500,000 people is the highest installation rate, overtaking Germany vastly, leaving Germany well behind. The whole of Germany over the last 15 years achieved 1.3 million installations. In Britain, you have 500,000 people realize, goodness me, stop all that crap, renewables and PV solar works. And it also works in winter. People have this complete, and that's about the lack of information. They don't know in a, in a sunny winter day, you still can produce enough energy to heat your house if you save energy first. All renewables will not work if you don't save energy. That's an absolute take. So all your computer, all the technology you carry at the moment in your pocket, your mobile device only works because it is incredibly energy efficient and got a high powered battery pack. Otherwise it wouldn't work. Think about your old computer, your old TV, they use much, much more energy. Yeah? So it's all about scaling back the energy usage while you introduce renewable at the same time. And that no one can predict, and they got the prediction wrong all the time. The International <laughs> Energy Agency predicted only 10 years ago that, that Germany will have now 12% renewable power. Well, Germany, as this October, has 28% of its electricity needs is produced with renewable energy. And when I talk about 28%, the vast majority is genuine renewables when we're talking about wind, solar, and water, 
but actually running water. Not we're not talking about uh, powered water like like um, dams, etc. So we're talking about water on rivers, which is actually harvested like a water mill, but actually is harvested in a different way. But that's too long to explain. But it's literally genuine renewable, like you could do in Britain with with wind and solar and water. And you don't have to have any fancy ideas, and it always makes me absolutely mad if you have these idiotic ideas of having kites flying in the sky and they all produce energy. And yet it's all sort of put, put in a corner that, yes, it may work in the future. Always people tell you, oh, yes, that may work in the future. It's not the case at all. And talking of Germany, Germany reduces carbon emission by 24.7% in the last, since on 1990 level. And the carbon emission have only gone up in the last two years by 1% each year, still achieving a 24.7% reduction on 1990 level. No other industrial nation in the world has achieved that. And the German economy is not bankrupt, they're not all unemployed, they're not all hopping around mad. You know, it's absolutely feasible. Yeah. The reason why uh, CO2 emissions have gone up, it's a very complex story. Basically in Germany, because they never had nuclear uh, bombs, never, never nuclear uh, weaponry and all of that crap. Basically, all utility companies that produced energy with nuclear had to put money aside to deal with nuclear heritage. Britain is more complex. We had the first commercial nuclear power station here in Britain in 1957. That was the first nuclear power station in the world, and everyone was thinking <laughs> about that as the future, because you had to give all these nuclear scientists developing bombs a new job and a new purpose of life. That is all there was to it, believe me. Yeah? And, and so basically they developed these methods, and there is, in theory, it is possible. Problem is humans are just not fit to deal with such a power source. And the banking crisis, Fukushima, everything should, should show us that the personal greed of a personal individual is much higher than that of a common good. And that basically means nuclear can, by principle, not work, because only the sun, because it's far enough away, and no one can be able to turn it off at night to save energy. That is basically why we got that is a good, good nuclear source, because it's far enough away. Anything closer than the sun, we're all suffering for it, yeah, because just no one can predict the problems which come with it. Now, there in Germany had to put all that money aside, and they put aside 36 billion, and that was all, all I'm telling you is not some conspiracy, madness, idiotic stuff. It's literally in the absolute box standard press in Germany, but it never makes it to Britain. It never is translated. Very recently I had a video in German, which was trans translated into English, and that video had to be taken down for political reason. I spoke to the editor, and they were basically pressurized to take the English translation away, so you have to brush up your German. So uh, it's really, it's amazing. And what I was reporting, 36 billion euros were put aside to deal with nuclear heritage in Britain, in Germany. It's 36 billion. And what did these utility companies do? They invested these 36 billion, obviously they haven't gotten in a gold coffer or something, they invested it in what? In lignite fossil plant. <laughs> so that is why it's a German emissions. They're blackmailed the German government. If they pull the plaque on that nuclear, on that fossil fuel, on the lignite plant, and lignite is the worst of all fossil fuels, yeah, and we've got plenty of it in Germany. And when you've been to Germany and you've seen actually the fields with diggers, which are as high as this house, actually dig a vast amount of coal away on a daily basis, it's, it's petrifying. It's absolutely petrifying. And the reason why companies like Vattenfall actually went along and invested all that money into these coal powered stations. So if now the government goes along and actually pulls the plug and says, no, you cannot produce any more fossil fuel, and we, have, we tax you. These 36 millions are kaput, and no one's going to deal with the nuclear heritage anymore. And we also have three fantastically well-functioning end lager, where we had all that nuclear waste stored, where they all have to be dug up again. Cost at least 8 million for just one of them. Yeah. So the 36 million, and it all came to light this February and this year, so quite a few months ago, when basically they want to set up a publicly owned trust fund that they put the 36 billion in and anything else would have to cough up the German, the German people, the government, the population. And that basically started an investigation. Everyone said, hold on a second, what's going on? That makes a headline and is discussed on a daily basis in Germany. 
none of it comes ever over to Britain. Yeah? And that is a shocking thing. It's a complete media blackout by it. Yeah? And what is something, it's one, one of the things which is just not reported about renewable, because as soon as you mention renewable, oh, it's a storage, you know, you know, you know wind doesn't blow, sun doesn't shine, all the going to die. It's complete <laughs> rubbish. What you need is an energy grid, an electricity grid, which can distribute the power quickly and efficiently. <laughs> and courtesy to utility companies, which just don't want that to happen because it decentralizes their power distribution, and yet they don't have that license anymore to print money, yeah, that is basically why they actually fought against it and never upgraded to grid to take that power fluctuation. So all you're blowing up the 50 um, uh, uh, incidents this year of the pavement explosion, as they're nicely called, if you follow the press, uh, where electricity shortcuts causes explosions, that just is the tip of the iceberg of how actually, how bad the grid is actually being maintained. So the grid has been nationalized yeah, and basically without having actually getting anything in return. And I am someone who actually doesn't necessarily believe uh, if you nationalize things is necessarily better. But what is certainly the case, if you do sell something on, you have to get something in return. You have to make absolutely clear things. So renewables would work very swiftly if you have the right grid. And they have incentives. They do get subsidies. Yeah. But all these, these renewables do get subsidies for one reason, because you have to set up the grid, you have to set up the network, you have to build a road to your wind turbine, and all of that. You have to do that once, of, or once and for all, then you can actually go bigger, bigger, and taller. And with wind, you have to get tall. Cheap energy, cheap wind energy is onshore. Offshore is stupid money-wasting idea, yeah? And only if you have money to waste, yes, you go offshore. If you've got money to waste, yes, you have HS2, yeah? But now you need a grid, yeah? You need a national grid, put that 50 billion into the national grid, and basically put up renewable as quickly as you can, and get away from, from maintaining that old energy network. And uh, I think that's pretty much my 20 minutes gone. <laughs> Thank you, Jürgen. Like everyone else, he will be here, and he'll be here for the wine uh, reception after as well, so you can grab him there if you want to talk to him. Uh, strangely enough, I see today a major